I'm Tiffany and this is Towering TBR. Today I am here to share with you some of my favorite memoirs that are graphic. Um, I've already shared my graphic novels and I will link that in the description below. Um, but yeah, these are all the nonfiction graphic sources that I really enjoyed and would recommend. The first is going to be the one I don't own yet. It's called A Puff of Smoke by Sarah Lippitt. Um, this is the author's graphic memoir of growing up with migraines. And I am a migraineur myself, and reading her memoir about, you know, having family over, but she has to go lie down in a dark room while they're doing Christmas celebrations or birthday celebrations or whatever, um, I really related to that quite a lot. I have actually purchased it because I loved it so much, but it just hasn't arrived yet because it's only published in the UK. So definitely recommend that one. And now I will get into the ones that I have either owned or was able to get at the library. So the first one is The Best We Could Do by T. Bowie. This is her memoir of her and her family escaping Vietnam um, shortly after the Vietnam War. Um, her mother was heavily pregnant when this occurred and they've had to stay in refugee camps and deal with a lot of hardships. And yeah, I just thought that this was really amazing. Um, I feel like most of the refugee stories that I had read so far didn't include like little bitty children and I think that that just makes their task even harder, um, especially when they need to, you know, be quiet. Um, yeah, this was really good and I will put some of the artwork up and yeah, highly recommend this. In my Magical Readathon Vlog 3, I vlog myself reading the book Seek You by Kristen Radka. This is a graphic nonfiction all about loneliness and seeking connections and being isolated and left out. She talks about how in the 2020 pandemic lockdowns, um, a lot of people found out that that was incredibly lonely and isolating. And she, she delves into lots of different topics. I would say that this is a very, um, it covers quite a lot of topics, but none really super in depth, um, which I enjoyed, but if, if that's what you're looking for, you might be disappointed. Um, this was so great though, and I am getting my own copy, even though this is the library's, but yeah. If you want to hear even more of my thoughts as I was reading it, definitely check that out. I have Persepolis by Marjane Satrapi. This is actually one of the very first graphic memoirs I read. This focuses on her growing up in Iran during the revolution. And the first half is her growing up in Iran and rebelling by like listening to Western music and jeans, which are Western as well. Um, and then the, in the second half, she is sent away from Iran. And I liked that part of the story less. I liked more about what it's like living in Iran, but either way, an incredibly compelling story. And it, it focuses on a time in an area that I didn't really know much about. So I thought this was great. Mira Jacob wrote Good Talk. This is a really interesting graphic memoir because she uses pictures and um, drawings to combine it. I also know that there is a an audiobook of, of this book and while I haven't listened to it, I love when they do that. So you compare visual and auditory together. But this is primarily focusing on the United States in 2015-2016 and having conversations with her mixed race son about what it's like to be mixed race. And when Donald Trump was elected president, um, she, 
they had a lot of conversations about what things might look like for non-whites in this country. And it's just, it's a really eye-opening conversation. And it's almost like a snapshot of 2016 in the United States. Um, but yeah, so good. And when I reread this, I'm going to pair the audiobook with it too, because I think that will be great. One I read last year was When the Stars Are Scattered by Victoria Jameson and Omar Muhammad. Omar and his little brother are growing up in a Kenyan refugee camp for several years. Um, his little brother has seizures, um, but they don't really know why and he doesn't really get any medical care. And it just, they are there for several years. Like, I, I want to say it's like nine years before they're able to move on. Um, but what I really liked too is at the end of the book he includes um, photographs of different things and I just, I really loved it. And this is actually I think geared towards middle grade but I found it really illuminating like how all this refugee camp is its like own little city unto itself. So definitely recommend. All of these I recommend. They're my favorites. That's a little bit silly. Um, a very hard, sad graphic mo memoir to read is Grass by Kim Suk Jendry Kim. This uh, focuses on a woman who, a, a Korean woman who was sold into sexual slavery for the Japanese armed forces. Um, it talks about how she had to sexually please the soldiers, whether she wanted to or not. Uh, it talks about the illnesses and diseases she gets because the men won't wear condoms. And, like, there are even some horrific parts where she's trying to bleach her nether regions because of the illnesses and she's trying to get rid of. And it's just, it's a heartbreaking look about... They were called comfort women, um, even though they weren't given a choice. And this is just horrific, and I didn't know anything about it, and I I was completely blown away by this, this story. Um, it's a true story. The author interviews the woman herself, and um, you kind of see that towards the end. She talks about what it was like to create this. So, definitely recommend, but it's quite a heavy read, so be prepared on that one. Last year, I read The Year of the Rabbit by Tian Viesna, and this is all about his family um, living in Cambodia, and he is born just a few days before the Khmer Rouge take over. They are this rebel group that then put people into work camps, and so many people died um, of illness, of malnutrition, of starvation, of exposure, like, it was terrible, and eventually they are able to flee this situation, and I just, I don't know, I, I again really enjoyed learning about the Khmer Rouge and just other parts of the world. And I think this made the NPR top 100 list last year, which is how I heard about it. Um, but yeah, fantastic. Sensing a little bit of a theme with uh, internment camps or refugee camps, this is They Call This Enemy by George Takei. George Takei is a man of Japanese descent. He's also, he was also on Star Trek, if you know that. Um, but he's of Japanese descent, and his family were relocated to internment camps shortly after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. The U.S. decided to take away money and property and all sorts of things from anybody with Japanese descent and put them in internment camps because they were afraid that they could be enemy spies, essentially. Uh, and what racks, like, what blows my mind 
is this was legal. Like, literally, the president signed into law this these internment camps. And I just... It's terrible, and we need to learn from our mistakes because they are so... They are repeating so often. Um, so, yeah. This was really insightful graphic memoir of his time there. The other first graphic novel I read, I said Persepolis was one of the first. This is actually, I think, the first one I read, Honor Girl by Maggie Thrash. This is about um, a teenage girl who goes to summer camp and discovers her sexual orientation and her crush on another camp counselor. And I just found that this really refreshing. It was just kind of a nice, wholesome, coming-of-age story, and I really enjoyed it. I think it's definitely more geared towards teens, though, and but I think adults can still enjoy it, too. All right, since a lot of those were a little bit sad, let's end on a happy one, Hyperbole and a Half by Allie Brosh. She has two graphic novels out. This is her first. And yeah, she uh, deals with anxiety and depression and she writes about her situations and finds some really odd, dark humor, but she's incredibly funny and I really enjoy her stories. I don't actually think that her art is like wonderful, but I, I really feel like it matches the whimsical kind of vibe that she puts off. And yeah, I just, I love this. So definitely, definitely you should read some of these. Are there any graphic novels? No. Are there any graphic memoirs or graphic nonfiction that I've missed? Let me know down in the comments below. If you read any of these, what were your thoughts? Let's start the conversation down in the comments. Talk to you there. Bye.